Hey guys, it's going to be a somber tone to today's video because one of my all-time favorites passed away today and uh, I thought I'd do a little tribute video to the late great Adam West. Mr. West was obviously most well known for his role as Bruce Wayne and Batman in the 1966 live-action Batman TV show. Um, which I didn't grow up on, that was a little before my time, but when Tim Burton's Batman came out in 1989 and the whole world was getting Batman fever, uh, they started playing the old uh, 66 Batman TV show on uh, TV every day. And that's when I started to really get into Batman. And uh, family wasn't rich, so I couldn't go out and watch the movie over and over and over again. Movies didn't come out as quickly on VHS tape as they do today on DVD and Blu-ray. And even when it did come out, couldn't necessarily afford a VHS tape because uh, some of them were very pricey back in the day. And uh, so it was TV's Batman that uh, satiated my Batman appetite. The Batman TV show was much different in tone from the Tim Burton movie. While Burton's movie still had some quirkiness and weirdness to it, it was much darker and uh, the Adam West show was just pure camp. Um, when you talk about camp and what camp means for campy movies and campy TV shows, I think the definitive campy show is Adam West's Batman. But the 66 Batman is how you do camp right. Uh, they tried to do camp again for Batman and Robin uh, with Mr. Freeze, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and um, that's widely regarded as one of the most terrible films of all time, not just Batman films. But somehow, some way, the 66 Batman show just was so beloved um, by, by so many. And I think Adam West had a large part to do with that. What I really loved about his performance in Batman is that he took the role so seriously. Um, even as Bruce Wayne, the jet-setting playboy who didn't have a care in the world, he still had a steely intensity to him as Bruce. Uh, but then as Batman, he was all business. And I loved that Adam West played his Batman, even though he was wearing spandex, um, not the most intimidating outfit in some of the goofiest situations, um, right down to the little cartoon blurbs whenever someone would get punched, baff, bop. Um, no matter what situation he was in, he still played it as the detective. I think he had an incredible respect for the character and he approached it in the same way that the character was originally presented in the DC Comics. So despite being in such a, a colorful, zany, wacky Dutch, angle filled show Adam West played it serious uh, but I think the key to his performance is that he took the role seriously but he didn't take himself seriously there have been a lot of great actors who have tried their hand at comedy or something lighthearted or camp and they just aren't successful because they do take themselves far too seriously whereas you get like a serious action star like uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson who also has some dramatic chops too but when uh, when he tries comedy more often than not he's he's very good at it because The Rock doesn't take himself too seriously um, he just flashes that giant smile in the blink of an eye in a situation that other actors might seem to get really touchy those giant inflated Hollywood egos um, but Adam West never seemed to have an ego at all. I really enjoyed Adam West's performance on Batman, but what I think I enjoyed just as much uh, were his talk show appearances decades later uh, on shows like Conan O'Brien, where he just came off as the zaniest, quirkiest, most off-the-wall character, but he still had that class about him. Adam West was all class. Just that old-fashioned um, poise and grace and intelligence and, and class. That's the word that keeps coming to mind when I think of Adam West. He had it on the show and he had it 
um, in those interview appearances and all of the fan conventions that he appeared at, um, he had the, he had it too there, and he seemed to be genuinely touched by the people who adored him as Batman. Um, for a lot of actors who become famous for just one thing, um, that that can be a nightmare for a lot of actors. There's so many actors who take themselves too seriously and want to be known as an artist and don't, don't want to be defined and pegged down to just one character. And they don't show a lot of gratitude and appreciation when they have one character hit it big. They want 10 characters or 20 characters to hit it big. And so sometimes you get actors like William Shatner or Mark Hamill who get that really big hit and then you can't fault them too much for it because it is probably like Chinese water torture. Um, getting asked about it over and over and over again thousands of times a year, year after year, decade after decade. You got to walk a mile in their shoes and think, well, what must it be like to be Mark Hamill walking down the street and the millionth person goes, Luke Skywalker! And by this point, Mark is trying to be polite about it, but you can tell his reaction is just um, programmed. Oh, thank you. Okay, that, that's that's great that it had that effect on you. He's, he's almost half asleep when he's reciting these polite um, responses. And there's a, there's a couple of actors like that. Uh, but Adam West always to me seemed genuinely touched. He didn't seem bothered, it didn't seem like a burden. I think he loved that he was Batman. He reveled in it, and you know, the best actors are the biggest fakes. I've said it in one of my previous videos, um, and it's just kind of funny that the biggest fakes are the ones who um, make the most money, get the most notoriety, the most adulation, the, the actors who are, are best at faking genuineness um, but Adam West seemed always genuine at those conventions he and and on those interview appearances away from the set he always seemed genuinely appreciative that he got to be Batman and that it continued to have that effect on so many people for so many years after he was done with that project um, and that to me just said that he was a, a real person. He was a real person in in the land of make-believe, in the land of pretend, pretend emotions, pretend gratitude, pretend genuineness. And that's why hearing of his passing um, really struck a chord with me because he, uh, he, was, he was one of the special people, not just in Hollywood, but I think, I think in this world. Now there are people out there who would like to chime in whenever one of these beloved celebrities passes away and they say, why are you so sad you didn't even know him? And those people, there's no point in debating or discussing with them. So I would encourage you to not waste your time. They're starved for attention and um, starve them some more. Don't, don't give them any of it. The fact of the matter is the reason that so many of us um, develop a, a caring for these celebrities is, is because something inside them speaks to something inside us. Uh, we see qualities that we admire, qualities that inspire us, um, and in a lot of cases we see these celebrities more often than we see our own friends or family. I've seen Adam West in his uh, TV show that he did 50 years ago more often in the past year than I've seen some of my friends. So. Um, it makes sense that uh, it would be sad to hear of his passing. Um, it would be sad to hear of the passing of anybody that you've watched, you've admired for years and years and years. It's just uh, a sad loss of, of talent, of a, a positive, fun spirit. You know, a guy who just lived for putting smiles on faces. I think people like that are very rare and they should be praised while they're still alive. But if we miss the opportunity, then we certainly should um, pay tribute to them upon their passing. So 
uh, for Mr. West. Godspeed. Um, thank you for sharing your talent with us. All right, I'm going to wrap this up because it's getting a little dusty in this room. So uh, thanks for watching and feel free to share your memories of Mr. West below. And uh, don't miss your opportunity today to tell someone that you care about uh, why they're special to you. Herb's Day.